Welcome to Who Smarted. We're trying to reach as many families as we can with our free podcast and educational curriculum. And nothing is more helpful than you telling people you know to check us out. And leaving good reviews at Apple Podcasts doesn't hurt either. And if you aren't already signed up for our email list, sign up today at www.whosmarted.com to get your own free curriculum and home activity guide for every episode. Big shout out to Josh, Kerry, Cash, and Dakota in Seattle. Thanks for listening and letting us know how much you enjoy the show. Like, follow, and comment on Facebook at facebook.com backslash whosmarted, and you might get your own shout out. Now, it's time to strike the right chord as you learn about the guitar. Ancient Mesopotamia, 5,000 years ago. Several hunters crossed the plains in search of food. Hey, look! By the watering hole! A wild boar! Stealthily, they approach their prey. Bows and arrows in hand. I've got a clear shot at a plump one! The first hunter pulls back on his bowstring. Drats! I missed! Here, here! Let me try! The second hunter takes aim and... Nah! I missed too! They are down to their last hunter. All right, Tibor, it's up to you. Okay, uh, hold on. Um... Tibor steadies his bow, aims, and... Well, what happened? Where'd the arrow go? Oh, sorry. I forgot my arrow back at the hut. This is not the first time Tibor has forgotten his arrow. So, you just shot an empty bow? Why would you pretend to shoot an arrow? Well, you have to admit, that sound is pretty cool. I mean, sure, but... Hey, I got an idea. Give me all your bows. To the other hunter's amazement, Tibor plucks all their bows at once. Whoa! Whoa! It's a sound unlike any they'd ever heard before. Wait! Check it out. Despite not catching dinner, the hunters rock out all night to Tibor's plucking. Until... Oops. Anyone got an extra bowstring? Psst. Okay, kid. It may not have happened exactly like that. But early archaeological records suggest the first stringed instruments were adapted from hunting bows. I mean, why else would prehistoric humans tightly wind strings over curved pieces of wood? I don't know. Somewhere, somehow, some hunter must have plucked his bowstring and realized, Dude, this sounds just like music! Today, the guitar is one of the most iconic and recognizable instruments on the planet and is used in nearly every genre of music. Whoa. But how did we go from bows and strings to the killer axes of today? How does it make those cool sounds? Hmm. And why is there a hole in it? I don't know. Get ready for some cool riffs. And a big whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone! We make smarting! Lots of fun! And who smarted? Question. Where were the first stringed instruments developed? A. Ancient China. B. East Africa. Or C. Saudi Arabia. Don't think too hard, because no matter what you chose, you're right. Nearly every ancient culture on Earth developed their own version of a stringed instrument. Wow! Cave paintings in France, dating back to 13,000 BC, show what appears to be a person playing a hunting bow musically. Stone carvings from ancient Turkey show a man playing a stringed instrument with a flat back, a hole, and a long fretted neck. Very guitar-like. And of course, there's evidence of early guitar-like instruments in China. 
Africa, and the Middle East. But it took a long, long time before those ancient instruments turned into the modern six-string guitars we know and love today. That includes a stop in ancient Greece, where, according to legend, the instrument had magical powers over animals, people, and even the gods. From Mount Olympus, this is Court of the Titans. In our first case, Apollo is suing Hermes for stealing 50 of his prized cows. Hermes admits to the cow napping, but says he has a good reason for it. Let's take it to the courtroom live. Your Honor, I have proof it was Hermes who pinched my beef. Yes, Apollo, I took your cows, but I used them to make a new musical instrument, see? It's a liar. Uh, I'm sorry, did you just call me a liar? No, not liar pants on fire. A liar spelled L-Y-R-E. Uh, I don't care how you spell it. What does this instrument have to do with my cows? Well, the base of the instrument's an empty tortoise shell, but the strings? I, um, made them out of cow guts. <gasps> what? You turn my cows into strings? I know, but wait till you hear it. Oh, oh my. By Zeus, that's the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. Well, take all my cows. Just give me that liar. Please, I'll drop the case. I must have it. Aside from tortoise shells and cow guts, ew, all sorts of crazy stuff has been used to make guitar-like instruments. Can you think of any? Did you say armadillo shells, long reeds and gourds like you see on Halloween? Um. Probably not. But it's true. Ah. All of them were used to make guitars. <gasps> and guitar picks, those little plastic triangles that we use to strum the strings, they used to be made out of seashells and bird feathers. But eventually, all guitars were made from the same material. Any guess what that is? Is it A, pine cones, B, shark's teeth, or C, wood? That's right, it's wood. During the Middle Ages, a string instrument called an oud, which means wood in Arabic, swept through the early Islamic empire. More oud, please. The oud is still played all over the world today and is similar to a guitar, except the very end of the neck bends down. It has no frets and it has 11 strings. And it kind of looks like a duck. In the early Middle Ages, the oud became hugely popular in Spain were developed into the classic straight-necked six-string guitarra. Now, any guess where the word guitar comes from? Hmm. That's right. The word guitar comes from guitarra. And that's the instrument you're used to seeing and hearing today. Jump forward to 1889. A Hawaiian teenager named Joseph Kekuku was walking along some railroad tracks with his Spanish guitar when he noticed something on the ground. 15-year-old Joseph picked up a metal bolt and began sliding it up and down the neck of his guitar while he played. The sound became known as the Hawaiian slide guitar. And it took the USA by storm in the 1920s and 30s. Soon everybody wanted to hear guitar playing. The only problem was, the guitar was just too quiet for big audiences to hear. Uh Uh-oh. How do you think they solved that problem? I don't know. I'll give you a hint. An inventor named George Beauchamp developed a system using magnets and metal coils to transform the sounds of the guitar into electrical signals that were sent to an amplifier creating the first electrical guitar. And the first commercially successful guitar from Beauchamp's company Rickenbacker was called the frying pan because it looked like a frying pan. Fusing the guitar with electronics left room for tons of experimentation. This led African-American musicians in the 1950s to create the most iconic form of guitar music. Got a lot of young people today that are really getting into the blues. Which eventually became rock and roll. As the years went on, artists continued to take guitar technology and style it to wild new places. Now, 
told you all about how the guitar evolved, but how does it work? How does strumming a string over wood make such a beautiful sound? To find out, stick around. To find out how a guitar works, let's return to the beaches of Hawaii, because the science of the guitar is all about waves. When I pluck this acoustic guitar string, it creates a vibration that travels down the neck of the guitar to the flexible wooden body. Your ears pick up the vibrating air molecules within the guitar body as sound. Now, all sound is made by vibrations in the air, but what makes a random sound a musical tone is that the vibrations all travel at the same frequency over and over and over and over and over. If you want to see this difference in sounds, get yourself a piece of paper and a pencil. I'll wait. Okay, I want you to draw two waves going across the page. The first one, I want you to make it totally random and messy with sharp lines. But the second wave, I want you to make nice and smooth with rounded lines like an ocean wave. Okay, did you draw them? Yeah. Well, the messy one, that's what the sound wave of any old noise looks like. And the smooth, nice wave, that's what a note from a guitar looks like. Oh, and if you're wondering still why there's a hole in the guitar, yeah, it's so you can drop the pick inside and have to shake the guitar to try to get it out. Just kidding. It's a sound hole that allows the guitar to project more vibrations, helping it produce a louder sound. But how are guitar sounds made? To find out, let's play a game. I'm going to take this string and stretch it out even tighter. Do you think that will make the pitch lower, like this? Or higher, like this? Remember your answer. Okay, I'm stretching the string making it tighter, and now I'm going to pluck it. If you said it would get higher from getting tighter, you're right. But why? Hmm. By pulling the string tighter, I've increased the tension. This makes the string vibrate faster, and the sound waves are closer together, which gives the notes a higher frequency or pitch. String tension is just one of four factors that affect pitch. The others are length, density, and thickness. Okay, guys, I've been practicing. Fantastic. Uh, well done, Eddie Van Halen, but I'm starving. Me too. Thanks for listening to Who Smarted. Please tell your friends about the show so we can grow our audience and do even more. New episodes come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And today's episode, Guitar, was written by Dan Bromfield and voiced by Dan Bromfield, Adam Tex Davis, Jason Williams, Kim Davis, and Chris Van Cleef. And yours truly, Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted was recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studio. Theme song by Brian Suarez. Lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This has been an Atomic Entertainment production. I will be member, I will be